to wait and see. Well, we don't have to wait long. We've done the waiting. Now we have to do the seeing. Um, well, we can see those Betway odds. Putting this one in favor of Heroic. The wonderful folks over at Betway may be inclined to agree with me on this one, Hugo. Heroic with a CT side start as well. Obviously, with it being the ultimate map pick, it's their decision as to where they end up. Tess says, I like this idea. Just waiting at short side. Now, they Ooh. try and rotate back into B, but the early warning system of Stown is flared on off. And Nico putting up another. Leaves Cajun B and AZ in a two on three. But if I've learned one thing about AZ in these pistol rounds, he's got a USP in hand and he's not a man to be underestimated with this gun. He does put up one, but nice. far up in with the response. And it's heroic finding themselves the pistol round here to begin this second map. It's only a strong start. I like the aggression as well, right? Like North try and throw a bit of an A fake. They they send Cristo up quickly and then they commit towards B, but uh, they weren't ready for the double setup. Right, Stout dying and then Nico being on the stairs, getting away with another trade. Like that, a lot of players towards B that North were not prepared to see. And now it will just be down to the Glocks. Stout spinning around on the stairwell, making noise. And the run boost is in. He won't let them get away with it. Stout's so ready. He might have even heard them. Uh, from the bottom of the stairs, throw that player over the top, and shots midair will send them flying back down. Stown wants to be careful, he needs to stay alive. Borup's been killed by the Glock. Stown doesn't want to fall to the same fate, so a rotation in the form of Nico here to make some money with that UMP. If Stown doesn't steal the kills away, Nico will get one, but it's going to be a, a done round anyway. Heroic 2 0 up. Nice start. Worth noting, if we look at the numbers coming into this game, both of these teams have slightly better CT sides on Vertigo. For Heroic, they've only played two maps, though, so we don't really have a sample size. But North, they've played plenty of games on this map. Worth noting as well, G2 also in this group. Also teams that, that North played back at, uh, you know, at Road to Rio. Um, G2, they beat, North, they beat Heroic yesterday on this map, but North... Well, they beat G2 on this map, so that's something to keep in mind here. Although, you know, it's not always as clear cut as, oh, you know, this team beats this team, so that team is better than that team, you know. It's like results change depending on maps, depending on days, depending on the series at hand and the importance of it. North know they need this map right now, because if not, they're going to fall short and get 2 0 inside of this, uh, this series. A late A execute, lots of B and A's early, and a man advantage for North. They group up on this A site. There's only Tessas here, but Nico is coming. Yeah, that's the thing right here in this group. Astralis might be safe right now, but any one of these three teams can continue. So yeah, all the series have gotten that much more important as a result. Tessas holding on to short side with this Famous. And Cage and B just sneaking down beneath them, but not for long. Oh, yeah. Tessa's double peeking in. However, there's another man offering himself up. Thankfully, Borup has kept this one even. At this point, North are wondering, like, how many more players yeah. are there in this clown car at short, man? Like, one comes out, then another, then a third. And then there was actually a fourth man back inside of the site that they're able to deal with as well. They walk into that heavy A stack. And they actually come out on top, which is a good look for North. And as Bless said on the desk just a minute ago, you know, like something Heroic was so good at on train, and that's shown again here, is the trading. It's the ability to have good spacing and, and, and not let a kill go, you know, down without, you know, an instant response. And they do that on short there. They have three players. Like, Clown Car's a great uh, metaphor, Harry. They just keep appearing. And North, they just keep killing. But right now, it's a mad advantage for KD and dropping K Jun down on the A side of things. It's going to be a ladder walk. Oh, actually, no, it's a yeah, ladder kill, rather, not on short. Hadian is going to get out of there with the AK, shuffling guns out of this round. Smart play, considering his team don't have weapons. So he's actually given an AK to Borup here, who only had a P250. That's a, or a Deagle. That's a massive upgrade. And Nico's even pushed B as well. Christo may be considering it, but a distraction is there in the form of Stown. And now a double flight coming through. North are trying to hit the A site. They're walking up to a triple setup. Everywhere they go is full of Danes. And not friendly Danes, not their teammates, no. Merely their enemies. AZ, Molly, won't work. Actually, it does. Borup eventually gets cleaned up. It's a very late kill. AZ now in a clutch. He can't compete. Stown on the flank. And Heroic find a third. That's a really nice round for Heroic. Just all over the map. Constantly pushing. Getting in the way. Not letting North do what they want to do right. And, and that's crucial. We already saw from the pistol round that North's plan is to be a little bit annoying in this game, right? You know, throwing the bomb on a B and running up A and then faking, faking that site to hit B late. I mean, Heroic... 
They know the strap book. They don't want to fall for any of these shenanigans. And so a 3-1 lead is certainly going to help. Pistols out for North, and somehow they find a kill with a block. Uh, and a Dink onto Stown as well. It's getting a little bit scary, but the flashes have come in from mid, and that leaves everyone pretty blind. Another block kill, but this is where they do run dry. Four on the board for Heroic. This is already a nice little CT side start. Not sure how the Glocks get away with so much there in that uh, round. Not really. Probably not helped by the fact that one of the players does fall down the ramp and, uh, you know, kind of falls into the lion's den, as it were. North, back in with rifles. There is an AWP in Cadian's hand this round, and he's taking it over here towards ramp to go for an aggro peak. There's a lot of players on the other Ooh. side for him to find. A double nade line up here for short side. That's a neat little idea. But I heard typing, Hugo. Ah, I heard it. I heard it going on. And uh, there is some typing going on in chat. This was caused by a TS crash. That's team speak. For the side of North. For North. They're just going to get that fixed. I want to see that double need. I want to see if it comes into any yeah, effect. Yeah. One thing that, to keep I mean, in mind. Hey, I'm a little bit upset if I'm uh, if I'm heroic yeah, there, right? Give that we, away, we, right? We throw our little double need that I haven't seen throwing before out, and then, and then you know, That's doesn't doesn't find any damage. I mean, how how much more frustrating would it have been if it had found damage? Yeah. And then well, the round might you... not have restarted. That's yeah, the key. exactly. Depends on the damage comes, Harry. That's uh, what I think what's, what's important to remember, and it's something heroic is definitely going to be keeping in mind. Probably the reason behind the nades is is what North will do on this A site is they'll often send AZ if he has a spawn really quickly into short. He'll hide top. North will get smoked off a bottom ramp. They'll spam the smoke. They'll wait a good amount of you know 10-15 seconds until. The CTs think, ah, okay, North are trapped behind the smoke. And then they'll throw a pop flash, and AZ will come out of the short side and appear out of nowhere and kill the ramp players. Now, obviously, all that is contingent on, you know, Heroic not getting aggressive, Heroic not clearing him or smoking him. But, you know, we saw that little trick that North ran two or three times against G2 off the back of AZ's spawn. He went there a lot, and he didn't always go out with a flash. Sometimes he just waited till his team joined him. But, you know, knowing North had that in their repertoire, well, those grenades from Heroic, they land exactly where AZ sits. So I think that's uh, Heroic trying to beat North at their own game, trying to trying to disrupt the game plan. We'll see later if that comes into play and, and whether AZ goes into that position once more. One of the teams that we, that I don't know about you, but I've enjoyed watching yeah. on Vertigo recently was, was Windstrike from the CIS division. Sure. Uh, I kind of really liked on their CT side how aggressive they were at ramp. I wouldn't mind seeing if that's something that we can see replicated a bit more. Uh, Hugo, this is that, that strategy you were on yeah. about. Sure. However, AZ gets legged and the nades did rain in over the top as well. But he wasn't, up. yeah, he wasn't found by him. Yeah, because he got legged, he usually hides where, where Tessus is aiming but below the sandbags on that grate. But because he was legged, he actually backed up all the way to avoid spam, to avoid grenades. And he doesn't die as a result. But now he knows those nades exist. They exist, Harry. If last round wasn't clear. Now it certainly is. So he is going to be, I imagine, very careful in that position moving forward. Oh, Tess says, up on this boost. All it takes is for Gade to show a little too much, and he won't fare very well. Gives away his position with the spam, and that's going to entice them to hold this boost on even longer. Heroic don't know it, and it can feel pretty natural to just want to abandon this once it doesn't find anything for too long. Oh, that Molly's going to force them out of position. Ooh. Spam back in from Tessas. Him and Gade go blow for blow, and Gade comes out far worse in that engagement. Two players now low for this north side. And they're just bottlenecked at ramp. They've, they've yeah. had this control now for a minute, and they still haven't budged. They still haven't found anything to go off of. Eventually, they're going to have to make a decision, and that decision comes in the form of this rotation. Back in underneath over here towards B. And that's where they're going to look to end up. Now, there's only one man here. Heroic, they fully stacked the oh, A no. site. And oh, AZ is dear. selling this well. But oh, there's been like a moment where North have reconsidered. And now they realize B is clear. They started to rotate the bomb back away. But it does come in for the plant at B. Borup can't deny it. And it's become all too clear. It's a five on five retake. This is one of the weirdest rounds of Counter Strike I've seen in a while. And Heroic don't know how low North are. Like, that's the key. There, there's so many tagged up players. Heroic can seriously win this round, even off of grenades. 
Ooh, MSL, he's climbed up though, North, looking to take fights to do push Heroic back, and that might just force a save straight up. Two kills coming from Christo and MSL, and Heroic, no leg in this round. They've got to give it up, and that's all off of Barb's rotation, right? Kadian may get a kill on the exit, but that's of little value here to Heroic. Oh, that rotate, man. You hate to see it. Someone made the call. Someone called Borup over, and him leaving that B site loses her, uh, loses Heroic that round in its entirety. Heroic were fully favored in terms of the health, in terms of the utility, the time, the positions. They had a quad A stack. Even if they just had one do B, just to give them a little bit more info, a little bit more time to rotate. Without that, you can see how they just get smoked out of the site, and they not, can't even fight. Not to mention, that bomb went down with six seconds on the clock. If there was even one player at B to have delayed laid the progress up through the ramp for wow. literally a matter of moments, right? It would have been a very, very different round, but North are allowed to just run on in. They get full sight control. They're pushed to CT. And so as a result, that bomb is just allowed to sprint up the entire way. Yeah, that's a bit of a heartbreaking one for Heroic, right? Because it felt like they'd done everything right. And then right at the end, one, one little misread, one mistake, and it cost them everything. That's what Counter-Strike can be sometimes. Doesn't matter how well laid the plan is. Sometimes it doesn't always go to plan. And Heroic, they're looking to do their best to disrupt the plans of North in this round. Aggressive fights with Tess as he gets volleyed. He will respond with one of his own. And the spam again, uh, back to Gade. He's going to be very careful. The, the value of playing this position nowadays with, with no longer it being wooden, it being metal, obviously your wall bangs are going to do less. So are theirs. So you can feel freer to play in this position and not be susceptible to, to spam, not as much. Tesla's going to flash his way back in. After the Molotov, they've already beaten to the punch. MSL is round the corner with the kill. Borup blinded in the sight. He can't do a thing. Oh, and the mollies have reined in. Borup is trapped. Left to fend for himself. Kadian trying to ring on in from CT, but he can't find a kill. Bomb has been planted and it's very exposed. It's very open here for Ramp. There is a kill provided at least in favor of Heroic. It's Nico's Ooh. flag stepping up and delivering. And now the remaining two players for North, they're both trapped inside of the site. One of these MSL, the other Christo. And these two were the ones who put this round on the board in the round prior for North. Can they do it again? Christo, five bullets in the AK. Ooh. And he's making every bullet count, but not enough for Nico. And MSL dodging this man, migrating to the ramp. There's no time for Nico in this round. Wants to try and get his hands on an AWP to save, and there is one back here in CT. But that's the round going in favor of North once again. These yeah. A plays yielding results now in quite a big way. Nice try from Nico. He did that a lot against G2 yesterday and won heroic some crucial rounds off of, off of these flanks, right? Pushing D or coming down on the ladder in the middle and just getting up ramp silently, appearing right when uh, North are looking to execute onto the site or, or just focus on fighting CT players. A roundup still are heroic, but money is down, not quite out. Nico is setting up his teammate in middle. What's this setup here? We got a two-man peak for heroic. That's it. I think it's Tessis and Nico there. So, see so if that has any effect later on. There is no one going mid right now, but Christo's climbing up the stairs, and Katie's got a sight towards A. Deep Molotov is a good response from North to deal with that close smoke. It lets him cross towards short side, and now Katie needs to vacate this position because, again, at any point, North could appear through the top. Doesn't want that to happen. Here's that double setup. Nico swings off a Tessus in contact, but he only gets one each. The trades are good, and mid has been controlled by North. They now can look elsewhere. They know Heroic are going to be scared about that position for the rest of the round after that double peak. Kadian even started to clear out the A site as well. AZ is going to get aggressive, and it will not work out. Heroic. Man up. Oh, KD has looked away, and MSL found the kill. That's perfect timing. It's given a plant to North, and now a two on two retake with Stown and Borup. One man coming in on this lower rotation, the other is down over towards elevators. Now, Nico, when he was on this flank, was able to accomplish a lot. Is Borup going to fare any better? He's caught a good timing up through ramp, but he has dealt with Cajun B. MSL is once again left to try and clutch this round, but he's been good for these in the past. He plays around the smokes, and he does deal with the first Ooh. man. Borup trades, and he's got a kit. Defuse comes on in. And it's a heroic kit. round. There's a kit with he his teammate, though. Yeah, there's a kit yeah, right I think next he's got to it. him. It's close. Oh, 
just about, just yeah. about. That is scary. I would, I was gonna say, you know, his teammate had the kit on the site, like, you know, risking that 10 second was a little scary, but he, he obviously knew yeah. the timing. He Her knew he had it. Heroic like, uh, you know, yeah. making a sweat with the defuses. Definitely, they, uh, you know, they did yesterday for sure. Ooh, scary stuff. But a fifth round taken for Heroic. And even a pause coming right off the back of a one round. They know North still have money and will have a game plan moving forward. And so Heroic want to put a stop to it as soon as they can. That's three pauses for Heroic in the opening 10 rounds of this game. That's quite a lot of pauses, Harry. They're only going to have one left. So not going to be easy for Heroic if this game goes the distance, if it goes to a long one. And with how North is certainly good on this map, I would imagine that will be the case. So Heroic might come to regret these early pauses, but you may as well use them, right, while you got them. North armed up three Galils. Four Galils, not a good buy at all. It's just going to be the Hero AK on MSL, but I wouldn't want it many other ways. Nico spamming that position that AZ often harbors, but he hasn't been there all game, not since that grenade round. Kadian pushed up on short as well. Does he want to take a wide fight down ramp into A? Nah, he's just going to hang around for the jump peak. North defaulting with two in middle as well, starting to take control, and the bomb's here also. Very passive setup for Heroic, just down spotting this from the construction area. He's going to fall off, give them the control, can always smoke it off. Nico's here as well. Kadian's dropped AZ down ramp. There is one more A player there, with the exception of the rest of North in middle. MSL's been dealt with, and now it is just this mid take for North. They can go anywhere they want. Oh, Nico lining up a double over in mid, and it's all fallen onto Gade. And Gade falls shortly thereafter. Six on the board for Heroic. They find a very important round here. Resetting the North money, bringing them down to nothing. And Kadian with a couple of choice shots down through ramp, helped out by Tessa, has turned the tide of battle early on. So now, with no money, not much hope in this round. Heroic might be about to build upon this lead even further. Seven stands loaded in the chamber, ready to go. North. Best weapon in this round is a Deagle on AZ. Deep smoke in B. They're waiting on the other side of it. They might look to explode through and try and find Borup early on. With these pistols, they've been pretty good at dealing with Borup over here towards B. And he will decide to back on out of the, uh, of the close angle down towards main. Fan of that doesn't need to be uh, risking it all up close and personal here down in the B bomb site. They are grouped up. They are ready to go. If he hangs around to try and drop this smoke, Borup could be in yeah. for a world of hurt. He knows it. He just backs out at the first sign of trouble. Response with the smoke onto ramp calls for a preemptive rotation nice. and even spams AZ down. That nades found more chip damage. And yeah, Borup's kind of dodged any threat of much being done in this round by the north side. Still want to go through into the meat grinder though. Or uh, ready and waiting. There's the Molotov. Flashes follow behind Heroic. They can just take three fights without having to worry. Oh, it gets a bit dicey, but Bob will clean it up with a three piece in the round. Heroic takes seven. And yeah, this is a great CT side. Like, you know, North aren't doing a whole lot right now, but what we do find in, the, in these domestic matchups, in these in these games where we have like very familiar teams or teams, sorry, that are familiar with each other and their play style is that sometimes the, the natural side of CS goes out the window and like T maps can see T maps and vice versa. And that actually repeats on both halves. But, you know, I don't know that, right? We don't know whether Heroic are going to be struggling on the T side the same way North are. So right now, North need to speed things up and pick up a round. But Nico does not want to let that happen. He's so good at forcing these early fights on ramp. And Gade, able to trade, able to get one, but it's not enough. Heroic just have wave after wave of defense on this A site. Four players at one point. Now three after they've lost one, but that jump is going to end MSL's life. Kadian's posted, and he might have more coming down the chamber as well. There's Christo, Cajun, last out, will get tagged, but gets the kill. Keeps North in this round, but only by the skin of his teeth in a one-on-three. Now, full util, a one-on-three, and loads of time with the bomb. This is a clutch setup perfectly for Cajun. Can he do it? He's found the first. Yeah, it actually doesn't feel impossible. It's Borup and Stown in a similar setup to when we've seen these guys in two-on-ones prior. 
Normally it's MSL finding themselves in these kind of clutch rolls, but this time it's Cajun entrusted with the clutch. He will find Ooh. down through the wall. Now okay. Borup has been coming in on a wrap this entire time, but it's been pretty slow. He's been sneaking in and was early on holding for a potential B flank. Now he knows that's not the case, but here's the problem. Cajun has the read. He's dealt with Borup on these wraps before. And so he's more than aware that this is a possibility. Cajun B on for a, uh, a stellar clutch here. Borup going to smoke the bomb, taps it. That's going to bake the peek out from Cajun, but Borup backing up into his crop. Oh, Actually, no. they just missed each other. Bit of damage exchange through the smoke, and Borup dropping a nade. Even more damage Ooh, onto Cajun. Got it, he gets the kill, and it's going to be very, very close, but I think he's got it just about. Wow. It's eight on the board for Heroic. Borup. Narrowly winning that 1v1. A really nice try from Cajun yeah. B, but Borat, man, he was in full control. You definitely got to give a shout out to Cajun there. Like, not only making that round really, really profitable for North in terms of, you know, getting a bomb part, getting three kills on Heroic, but I love the one on one post part, right? He plants for ramp, he plants for short, he realizes Borat's on the flank, and then he plays a position where he can't stop the bomb from getting defused. That looks dangerous, but, you know, it, it's, he's getting in the head of Borat. Borat doesn't have that smoke there. Cajun probably just wins the round because. There's no way that Borup gets out of the site in time. Now it's just a fast play with Tech 9s, and well, these are not the best guns for North. Inconsistent at the best of times. Borup is going to be able to drop a couple. And actually, well, maybe they'll get stolen away from underneath him. Two at the end of things. Heroic on nine. This is an excellent game, but it's certainly feeling like North have not shown up in yeah. any capacity. Man, this is this is a little bit scary because I, I tell you what, I felt like Heroic are playing at a really good level right now as well because you think about this G2 game yesterday right, when yeah. they played on Vertigo. Heroic managed six rounds on the CT half. They then ended up losing the pistol in the second and they went 13-6 down. But if you remember, yeah. they pulled that all the way back back all sure. the way back and only just lost out right their t-side was stellar um so the problems might be just beginning here for north one thing i will say is like a bit of a caveat for north is that their ct sides on vertigo i think are probably one of the best out of many professional sure. teams on this map but the issue is at this point if heroic keep building and keep and get double digits and take you know 11 yeah, 4 12 point, 3 north aren't gonna have a ct side to run i think about how good msl is with the orb if you get 12 3 you don't get the orb you don't get a chance to run that weapon so north need rounds they need a buffer on the t side and this has to be it but heroic have had all these little gimmicks all these little boosts and they haven't even shown North most of these. This boost has been done three times this game. It's yet to be seen by North. It's yet to get a kill for Heroic. So finally, this could be the time. But again, a Molotov, North, methodical to death. They will actually lose a man in the process as well. AT getting picked up by the Orb. I like the fact that North are playing safe, playing methodical, but it's coming down to the end of the rounds, and that's where Heroic are coming out on top. And I feel like North, for a team that we like watching on this map so much, it does feel like sometimes they get stuck in this like rut of just going back to the A yeah. site over and over again. Sure. We know that they have so much depth on Vertigo. Now a man down. They're looking to put this back into a four on four. Kadian, though, is holding for this push, and the Molly forces MSL into his crosshair. Nice utility work to lock in that kill. Now a wall of smokes has come in at the site, and it allows North to push up behind it, but Ooh. they're sharing this bomb site. This is wow. shared accommodation, and Testes is the least kind of landlords. He shuts it all down, along with Kadian and Nico, and Heroic, 10 on the board. The bomb plant denied for North. And this is looking like it could have 2-0 written all over it, Hugo, with Heroic pulling it off right now. A tactical pause called in for the North side. They're first in this uh, in this T-half of play, and it's 14 rounds deep with only three rounds to their name. Yeah, we are. you mentioned that, Harry, and I think it's a great point. We have seen a lot of teams, when they, when they are typically good Vertigo teams, G2 did this, for example, and they're having a rough game. They're having a game on the T-side where things aren't working. You're getting shut out of the round. You're losing clutches. Things aren't perfect. And they just default back into A, round after round after round, to no avail, to no success, to no progress from some of these previous rounds. And, and that's what lost G2 uh, a game in, in RTR as well. I can't remember which one, but um, yeah, it's happening to North right now on the T side. They've had a lot of A hits. They're going to go back to it as well. You can see Krista already lining up that short smoke. We haven't seen any. Think of the pistol. Think of the pistol. North faked A and went B. It worked wonderfully. Why have we not had anything like that since that point? Like in terms of forcing rotations, they've done a good job. The only time North have, have felt good is when they forced rotations, when they played the, the mind games with Heroic. If you're going down to head-to-head -head fights or smoke spams or 
A executes, Heroica winning every single time. So North, you know, and they're running out of chances, but I would love to see in these last couple of rounds an attempt at the A fake and, and to, to hit B or, or even some mid control with heavy numbers. Obviously, that's been something North have attempted and been shut out by this orb numerous times. Cadian is here once again, and he has the same in mind, dropping Cajun, no trade for North. They are hitting B with that one lurk in middle, and they've got to go fast as well. Christo leading the charge with the Galil, and instantly removed by Bob. The flashes are good. Heroic lose a man, but they're still up in a four on two, and Gain with the bomb is on 20 health. If he dies, this round is done, and uh, that's seeming more than likely. AZ has come to join him with a flashbang, but it misses, and Gabe will get grenaded. AZ alone, they know where he is, and this should be Heroic on 11. Oh, this is grueling for North right now. 11, as you say, Hugo, appearing on that tally for the Heroic squad. And this is a very valiant effort from the Heroic boys to try and get this one done in two. And things are really looking good for that to happen. One of the other things I think that's so important on Vertigo, right? We talk about how, you know, if North got 12 3 which looks like it could happen here in this game, it might not feel like they really get to play this CT side. But I think even if they find the pistol, right, one of the things you really need on Vertigo is like time to make adjustments. For like a few rounds, you Ooh. might get caught off guard by these fast plays. And you kind of need that buffer to safeguard yourself. Now, in this round, they have picked up a man advantage and they're really pressuring this aggressive ramp hold. They're looking to punish Heroic for going aggro in round 15. And they still sit with a man advantage, even with Kadium recuperating some of these sunk costs over towards short side. It's still leaning in the advantage of North. Kadian's right. actually getting aggressive. He might catch the timing here. Gade up on top of the cinder blocks, deals with Borup, who runs on in to his demise. North with a shot at putting up a fourth on the board before this half draws to a close. Yeah, Reese are going to come in and North look like they will fully commit here with the execute. The bomb is in tow. Grenades will go and Cage is going to lead the charge, pushing the orb of Cadian back. He's smoked off and spam is dangerous because Cadian can just get shot through. He's down to 30. Frustrated that he can't hit anything through this smoke, but sometimes he's got to let it go and this round might be one of them. Does Stan want the orb? Kadian's going to take the rifles down, not low by any regard, just feeling it, and he's going to have a go in this retake. Nothing to lose, everything to gain. Heroic going to start to move. Kadian first point of contact here as he looks into the site, but look at how passive North are playing. They're not getting any contacts down. Dropped by the Sandbags player of Cajun, and Kadian, he's just a second away from death himself. Even if he gets a kill, it won't matter. North have done it. Well, heroic. They're leading the way by example right now. 11 to 4 up here in the second map after already being 1 0 up in these in this series. And those Betway odds that just came in, 1.01 to 9. They are massively in favor of Heroic right now, and justifiably wow. so. And Nades found a lot of early damage, however. And the first kill in the pistol going the way of North, but the victory is short lived. Gade toppled at the V bomb site. And AZ now, the only man that stands between Heroic and getting this bomb down. He falls MSL on the rotation. The bomb's already been planted, and MSL now at a 1v2 does have a kit to work with, but that means he's lacking the armor here. Aim Punch gonna play into this round for him. The smoke down, wasting even more time off the clock, and nothing getting offered up to MSL. There's a crossfire set up, they know where he is, they've got his name, they've got his number. MSL swinging wide, and to no avail. Pistol round found for Heroic, and this is a very grim scenario to be in if you are North. 12-4 down, pissed around going the way your opponent's having to eco here, or maybe forced by right, but whatever the decision is, you're not feeling good about it. No, and this is a matchup that the North really wanted to be competitive in, especially in a map like Vertigo. This is something we, uh, that, again, Blair and Potter talked about on the desk. They said that the fact that this map came through, the fact that Hero Heroic let it slip, meant that they probably had something up their sleeve, and well, 12-4. Maybe the scoreline speaks for itself. That's certainly looking like the case. North right now looking like they're going to lose this series. And that would, would you agree, Harry? I don't know. We're, we're not the be all and end all, but let's have this conversation on this eco. Would that put Heroic as the second best Danish team? Obviously, Mad Lions in the mix here looking good recently. Copenhagen Flames certainly a talking point. We saw them in the road to Rio make a bit of a play there. And so, you know, there, there is certainly a lot of talent, but Heroic right now, this is more than dominant. This eco, however, is getting out of control. USP is finding two kills in B. Sound does trade in middle. 
three on four in favor of North and one gun picked up. That's all they've got to play with right now. They're going to throw a full rotation the way of A, but Cadian has already cleaned up this site. He's already here killing Cajun. Three on three. Heroic will be able to plant the bomb and that's where things get ultimately very difficult for North. Oh, Cadian removing the man in CT and dodging a lot of the danger in this round. Now leaves it all onto AZ. And with this mid lurk still coming in from Stown, he runs the risk of just getting blindsided from elevators. Ooh. Shots from Stown, but AZ not able to recover in time. 13 on the board for Heroic and now a uh, initial buy on through for the north side. Weapons out in full force now for North and one last attempt to keep the dream alive in this series. Heroic trying to settle it all with a B play and North, they stack three over towards A early on. They rotate them away and that's because Christo hasn't seen anything at ramp on his peak. They're already aware that this is likely a B play, but Nico wow. deep in the site gets away with a lot of damage. Not a kill on the back of it though. The Molly's raining in and that's gonna trap a man. AZ, ooh, he's stuck. He gets burnt down to 21 points of health. Trapped out on a limb here. Both these players low and the bomb ticking away. North gonna have to try and retake this site. They deal with Cadian through the smoke. That's gonna help out massively. So they've got themselves quite the advantage. There is still Stown waiting to come in on a mid lurk. It all depends on how much time Testes and Stown can buy or wow. both rather at the B bomb site. And Testes with three. Now the flank comes in from Stown and he's removed another. Cage of B left in the 1v2, trying to deny 14 to Heroic and he can't get it done. He's gotta get away. He's gotta run for the hills, but it's 14 on the board for Cadian. And his ragtag squad of boys, 14 to their name, just two away from taking this series over North in a dominant 2-0 fashion. Yeah, extremely dominant. There's 16-4 on North's map pick. That's likely here. That's looking possible for Heroic, even with the save from Cajun. So that's, that's yeah, not the game that North showed up today wanting. And this is really going to shake up the group as well, right? Three Danish teams in one group. Astralis 2-0 at the top. G2, the French boys stuck in between the Danes. And Heroic 0-2. This is at least going to put their first victory in the mid. Oh, dear. Messy stuff. Christo getting tagged. He's going to get away. Oh, my God. He's hanging around. And yeah, Christo. Sorry, buddy. You deserve that one. Taking the second shot. Giving away his position. And Cadian takes him down despite being on five. 14-4 and four on three. Heroic head towards B. Or do they? Yeah, they make a lot of noise in this rotation. Oh, no. They've slowed right down. MSL's tried to go aggressive down here at ramp, but MSL's thinking, I'm coming in on a big lurk. This is the... Oh, no. Tessa is out at ramp, and he was holding for it. It's a bait and switch from Heroic. They make noise wow. on the rotation to B. They force a... Uh, well, they don't force, but they, like, encourage a flank from someone on north, yeah. right? They tempt them in. They say, oh, you hear us going to B. You want to come? You want to come get the information? They wait patiently patiently for it and with so much time left right they can just afford to wait all day now they get the information that gains at b and they just immediately execute into the a site i absolutely love the way that heroic are approaching this map it feels like we've already seen more from them on this t side than we got to see from north uh, and that's the sad thing like i feel like north have such a deep strap book on this map but it was just endless a takes from this squad Heroic doing a great job of just giving away the information that they kind of want North to hear. And that is what a lot of Vertigo is, is just deciding yeah. what info you're going to give to your opponents and how you're going to use that. I feel like Fury can be a great team for, for, for teams that constantly bash A uh, on the T side of this map. I feel like watching Fury would be a great example of, of, of knowing how to switch things up. They're so good at like taking B quick or going for these really fast mid splits where they cover it with utility and, and, and chase down the construction. Right now, North, well, stuck on the CT side, being delivered a bit of a beating and not having much to say about it. 15 rounds to Heroic. This is it, pushing them over the line. One more will be a 2-0 in this series for Heroic. And to think the train was actually competitive as well, or at least more so, nine rounds for North there, and there's nothing like it here. What's this little setup in support? KD is just looking from an off angle, not quite going for the run boost. North tried it, though, and Heroic didn't, so who wins there?
Still heroic because they stopped the, the run boost midair. But what have North even got in this round? No kit for the retake. Not even an M4. Four Famuses and an MP9 on utility here. Until towards mid for heroic. They're walking into a bit of a setup though. Yeah, it's a little double elevation peak over here in mid. One player playing high, the other playing low. And this is a very, very tricky situation to peek into if you're heroic. However, if you peek it like that and you just eliminate Cajun, you spot him in the corner, you somehow isolate that engagement into two separate 1v1s, then suddenly it's nowhere near as threatening. And now, with mid control being taken, once again, they try and tempt North with the idea of coming in on a flank. Look at Christo. He's gone all the way down towards the bottom of ramp. He's holding in this corner, and they're going to check it. Sure, he gets one, but this is where the train Ooh. should come in. Yeah. And Christo gets dropped, trying to remove that... Uh, well, sorry, trying to drop that smoke down towards the bottom of ramp. And right there is, again, something Blair mentioned on the desk as, as a bit of a newbie to this level for Christo. He, you know, he had situations like that on, on train where he would get caught out out and, and not be expecting his opponents to trade him, thinking he has a chance to pop a grenade or, or swap weapons. It's just not available. And you're going to get punished at this level. Right now, Heroic are at such a pivotal point and only one kill away from making this a reality. It's just easy. Not going to happen. He